Fuzzy Zeller had the biggest drive and then hit a five iron close enough to have a birdie effort. He did not make the birdie, but with Palmer and Trevino out of the hole, all of the pressure was on Jack Nicklaus, who had chipped long off the fringe, needed an eight footer for par and halved the hole. On the third hole, a harbinger of good things to come for Lee Trevino. 451 yard par four. Good drive, and from 165 yards out, a five iron inches away. An easy birdie for Lee Trevino and a chance to pick up $45,000. However, Jack Nicholas from the fringe had this birdie putt to have the hole and take the money away from Trevino and carry it over. A little room service from Fuzzy Zeller. But it was Fuzzy who was going to be served on the fourth hole, 174 yard par three. His tee shot put him nine feet from the cup and he was this far from a $60,000 skin. Fuzzy Zeller, first on the board, first skin of the day. On the fifth hole, Jack Nicklaus, who was playing the best golf, reached the par five in two, and a 45-foot eagle putt just dodged the cup. Nicholas will tap in for birdie, and now from 10 feet away, Fuzzy Zeller trying to have the hole and return the favor of what happened to him on hole one. And Fuzzy lifts the 15,000 away from Jack. That's what you get for moving it on me. Yeah. You're lucky to have this one. <laughs> that made the seventh hole a carryover worth $55,000. And Lee Trevino from 70 yards away, a wedge, his second shot. Good for $55,000. And as Lee said, it wasn't an accident. He had been practicing it for 47 years. On the eighth hole, it was Arnold Palmer with this birdie effort for a $25,000 skin. And so Zeller had a skin, Trevino had a skin, Palmer had a skin, and today, $310,000 for the last nine. 1986, a different stage, an awesome setting. La Quinta, California, and PGA West rated the most difficult and demanding golf course in the United States. As unforgiving as a hanging judge. Four giants of the game primed to make a run at it. The timeless Arnold Palmer, who with shirt tail out and a hitch of the fan, charged through the 1960s to capture the imagination of golf fans everywhere. It was Palmer's play and Palmer's charisma that gave birth to the golf boom. And all the while, Arnie picked up green jackets at Augusta along the way. Frank Urban Zeller, the Hoosier from New Albany, who waved a towel in mock surrender at wing foot, then went head to head and beat Greg Norman for the United States Open Championship in 1984. The happy-go-lucky Fuzzy. The irrepressible Lee Trevino, the Merry Mex from Dallas raised on a $5 Nassau, weaned on a pressure putt, golf's third all-time leading money winner, showering kisses on a golfer's best friend, a hot putter. And the best of them all, a legend in his own time, Jack Nicklaus, the bear with the look of eagle, a giant amongst the great six-time winner at Augusta. The greatest money-winning golfer the game has ever known. And when it all comes down to it, a father and his son.
Golf's four greatest names competing for $450,000. The Skins Game is brought to you by your Toyota dealer and the all-new sporty Corolla FX16, who could ask for anything more. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. By Unisys, the joint power of Sperry and Burroughs. Unisys, the power of two. And by USF&G Insurance. USF&G covers the USA. Four greats in pursuit of the skins, coming up in a moment. Leaderboard reflects the action of yesterday. We did not have an outright winner on the ninth hole yesterday worth $25,000. That was carried over to today to the 10th hole that made the 10th a $50,000 hole. And Jack Nicholas and Lee Trevino each have it with pars. So we go to the 11th hole, a par 5, 604 yards. Here's Peter Jacobson. The 11th hole is a long and tough par 5. It's 604 yards long. They call this hole eternity because I think that's about how long it takes you to play it. When you're standing on the tee, all you can see is trouble. Your tee ball has to carry these two bunkers that you see right here. I don't think any of these players can get home in two, so you're going to see them all laying up, and they've got to keep the second shot to the right because this fairway slopes severely from right to left. The good wedge players are going to have a chance to make a birdie here. The pin is in the back left of the green, and I think this is a very exciting hole. Exciting indeed, because with three carryovers, this hole is now worth $75,000. No. No way. Oh, right there. Oh. in the fairway, we understand Arnold Palmer is between the bunkers. <laughs> I had another good line. Surprise. Surprise. Because he's Surprise. pushing Surprise. it slightly off like to the right. right. Three get there. He get the no. no. He can't he get home. Get home. Straight, huh? lives. He can get home if he lives in that condo there. <laughs> That's the only way he's going to get home, isn't it? Yeah, if he lives right That's there. The car. Oh, that's big right there. It's a long walk of 604 yards, but it's well worth it. There's $75,000 at the end of it. Hey. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, and welcome to the back nine of Skins, where each hole has a designated value, and if you don't have an outright winner, the money is carried over to the following hole. From 10 through 12 today, barring carryovers, each hole is worth $25,000, and from 13 through 18, each hole alone is worth $35,000. The winner of the last skins today will receive a 1987 Toyota Camry. And the overall skins winner for 1986 will be given a personal computer by Unisys to be donated to the charity of his choice. Yesterday, $140,000 was won. That leaves $310,000 in the middle of the table today. And as you well know, I'm sure by now, Lee Trevino, Fuzzy Zeller, and Arnold Palmer have won skins Jack Nicholas so far is on the outside looking in. Looking at Skins with us as he was last year and with us yesterday, Peter Jacobson. And with the money and the prizes getting higher, how about the toughness of the back nine? Well, as we saw yesterday, this course starts out tough, and today we're going to see it just get tougher. The back nine has got some beautiful holes, 
And I think, as we said earlier, we are going to see a few with these skins, one with pars. I would think the bear is on the prowl. Well, he shot 34 yesterday, but as in skins, it doesn't matter what you shoot. It's just a ma it matters what you do on each individual hole. Also with us today, covering the action, 1968 Masters champion Bob Golby. Bob? Vinny, I'm out here in the 11th fairway, and it's exciting today. Boy, I'm really keyed up, and we see some great golf. Arnold is in the left rough, but he has a good break. He bounced to the left of the bunker, and this is a 604-yard par 5, and difficult. Water on the right, and he cannot reach it in two. I'm looking for some great golf today from these four great players. So it'll be Arnold Palmer. Zeller is in slight rough on the right. And Trevino and Nick yeah, room. in the fairway. No, uh, no, not there. Gone. <laughs> he wanted to go. He got the ball up in the air. There was an shooter on him, and he did. The wind caught it, brought it back. He wanted to get up on that plateau. Wanted to go left. That ball right in that damn, and that ran that car track, Herman. It ended up in the right side of the edge of the fairway. Ben, we don't play many par fives on the PGA Tour where you have to lay up with a three wood, but when you have 604 yards, you've got a long ways to go. Stay on the top of the hill, doggy. Great shot by Fuzzy, right? Thank you. Good shot. So Zeller in very good shape, and now here's Jack. As I mentioned, this fairway slopes severely from the right to the left. You've got to keep that ball on the right side of the fairway to have an open third shot to the pin. Check with the three wood, right center. Good, solid shot. You might have caught I'm a little surprised. Exchange. I thought they would go left. They were talking before about maybe huh? Zeller could get home in two. And Trevino said, yeah, he can get home in two if he owns a condominium up there by the green. 604 yards to $75,000. We're coming up to third shots on the 11th hole, the par five, 604 yards, worth $75,000. Arnold Palmer, about 185 yards into the wind. That is not a very big section back here. You can see what Arnold's faced with. Not he's got about 185 yards to a, on a blind shot, and there's the water on the left side, so he's got to be very careful with this shot. leaving it on the right side, but they had to stick it way in the back. For $75,000, they should have put it off the green. So Arnold Palmer is there in three. Lee Trevino is as hard as I can He missed his second shot slightly. So this will be his third. This is the tough second oh, shot that, they, that, that Lee played from because it's a little bit of a downhill shot, and you're trying to hit a three-wood and get it up. But this really is becoming a favorite hole of mine because it's a definite three-shot hole. There's no, you can't bail out. You really got to hit some good shots here. Paul, pulled it a little bit, going towards the rocks, caught the rock, bounced left, won't go in the water. I almost got it in there. <laughs> Trevino in the water <clears throat> 42, right? on the fifth hole yesterday. I was, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to go right off the rocks with a little cut. Well, my problem, though, Herman, I missed that second shot. That's what happened. I was trying to put it up on top yeah, of the hill. a lot longer to look, I should have gone ahead and hit it and let it go down there. 
But you've got to come in from this side on this hole. Let's see now. Let's make sure. 97, 15. 97 would be normal. Would be 82. 15, 97. That's right. Jack, about 105 yards to the green. Fuzzy Zeller now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fuzzy going a little left of the flag. That's short, too. Short. He was, and hits the fringe and bounces. He was a perfect... Uh, so actually it is Arnold Palmer, who is a little little heavy, but the three, with Lee Trevino in the water and a $75,000 skin dangling in the breeze. The 11th green, Jack Nicholas is away in pursuit of his first skin. And this one, well worth pursuing. $75,000 worth. Seven holes. Oh, that one got quick. He has just missed. Went the other way, too. No, no, you're out. Huh. And looking at three feet at least for par. right off the fringe. Look at that thing go left. Oh. Oh, did he grab it. So Fuzzy again, three feet away at least. The door is open and Arnold Palmer's rooters and there are many here. Leg it. The gallery saw Arnold pick up a skin on the eighth hole yesterday and another huge turnout to see the back nine of skins. Then when I first played the golf course, I didn't like the 11th hole, but I'm, I'm, I'm gaining respect for this hole because it's so tough. Arnold's about 11 feet, or at least, it, Arnold's about 11 feet just off the fringe when I bother his putt. It's going to go a little left to right. Very makeable putt here. still talking uh, about why that shot has been cut in off those rocks. I think he was trying to bounce it off the rocks like Irwin did at Pebble Beach. Just the pad I pulled it. Get it down there where I had a... Jack has a good, strong yeah. four-foot putt coming. He saw the putt break coming up this same line. Now, at some time, they don't really do the same thing going back because of the grain. But this is down grain now, so it should not break a lot. This is four feet for a time. Not in yet, but he's about a foot and a half past. 
Thanks, so much. Right in the heart. So Nicholas gets his par. It'll be up to Palmer from a foot and a half or Zeller to have it. Let's see there, Mike. Knock that thing in, Fuzz. <laughs> Barney rooting for Fuzzy now. He's about three, strong three feet. Basically the same line as Jack, down grain, so the ball shouldn't break much. Arnold Palmer was commenting yesterday on how solid Fuzzy hits his putts just about every time he takes it back. Well, I don't put it good in me. Yes, sir. I was thinking of it, though. Sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So Thank that you. not only halves the hole, it makes the upcoming 12th hole a par four. Hold your breath. Worth $100,000. Don't go away. have had the holes from 9, 10, and 11, making the 12 hole $100,000. Let's take a look at it. The 12 holes are par for 342 yards long. These pros may use drivers today, but I think the sensible shot would be a three wood or a one iron placed to the right center of the fairway. You notice that big crater bunker on the left blocks your view of the pin surface, and it's very hard to see the green. This is called the moat hole because of the big sand trap surrounds the whole green. Today, the pin is placed in the left front corner. picture gives you a good view of the hole. You've got to keep the drive to the right to have any chance to see the green on your second shot. Left to right, starting down the center, cutting to the right. Good looking drive for Lee Tavino. Oh, it took a big kick. Going up. Oh, kick, huh? well, give me the driver. Then. I like it. Yeah. I can see it. I have to stand on my head to hit it, but. <laughs> Gotta be from West Virginia to play this for you to play the really good. with the driver pushed it to the right towards the gallery. Uh, sure. I don't think they were three of them. <coughs> I'm gonna get it out there where I can look at it. Push it too far to the right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. That's why I should have dropped some of this one. Chad, look at dropping back to the three wood. Coach, beat all that. Yeah. 
Bill Fuzzy Zeller gambling with the driver hits into the gallery. Nicholas with a three wood is in perfect position, still looking for number one skin. You remember Fuzzy Zeller hit a driver off the tee into the gallery fairway right. So he is away. This will be Fuzzy's second shot on the par four. Yeah. Have to hurry. Gonna have to hurry. That's that big gaping bunker, short of the green. They call this the moat hole. You can see Actually, the moat stuck in the bank. Green. His ball stuck in the bank of the sand trap. And friends, as deep and as ominous as this looks, wait until you see 16. Lee Trevino, second shot. Oh. <laughs> Distracted by a, someone in the gallery behind him. We've had three distractions on this one hole. Do you think it has anything to do with the money? You maybe? got it. $100,000. <laughs> Pin today is in the front left of this green, which does bring that big wedge bunker for Trevino. Remember yesterday, Lee hold a wedge from 70 yards to win $55,000, and the wedge gets him close today to put some heat on. Now, Jack. Pitching wedge for Jack. Good looking shot. Great shot. And he is that close to his first skin, providing someone doesn't have it. Maybe five feet from the hole. You gotta be able, you gotta drop that ball there. It's plugged in there. I can't Jack, believe that. Jack, I just that saw ball. you hit a pitching wedge and Lee hit a sand wedge. Yeah. Is, that, is there some reason? Uh, I can't hit a sand wedge. Yeah. I've had 87 yards in the wind, and uh, I just There's felt no like I could be on this board. We're watching Arnold hit his second shot. It sounds like audio, Phil. Pitching wedge or sand wedge. A lot of guys have different lofts on different clubs. And I have a relatively weak pitching wedge. Lee probably has a pretty strong sand wedge. Thank you, Jack. <coughs> well, I know where it's at. So Jack Nicholas is still looking for his first skin, and we asked Lee Trevino if that adds to the pressure. Is it an accumulative thing? If you don't win a skin, you don't win a skin, and everybody else is yeah. wanting them, yeah. you really feel it. Certainly. You get to feeling it more and more and more. I don't think it'd be any different than a baseball player if he strikes out two or three times in a row in the World Series. And then all of a sudden he comes back and he says, man, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no, I, I think yes. I, I think that you'd feel it more and more. I, I, I think the, the, the greatest thing in the world, if, if, if you could win that birdie the first hole and win that first skin, then I think that, uh, that you would be at ease the rest of the way. But uh, it'll be interesting. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it very much. Everyone thinks of Lee Trevino and gambling, I think, among other things. And your book explained when you were picking up balls in Texas, you'd play, well, you were one of the fastest draws in town, so uh, everybody would come after you. It was Lee Trevino who, d who defined pressure as saying uh, betting 10 when you only have five in your kick, you know. Uh. It was very easy for me then because at the time, I thought that I was, for the exception of the touring pros in Dallas, I was the best player in Dallas. I knew that. I knew there was no other amateur in Dallas that could beat me. I didn't mind playing them. I had no handicap. Uh, so I, I think it's a different ball game when you're talking about Jack Nicklaus and, and, and Arnold Palmer and, and Fuzzy. Um, no, you, you, you know now uh, that, that, that those players are, are as good or better than you are. And uh, that's where the pressure is going to be. I didn't play for a lot of money, but I played for what I had, and that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And um, uh, I, I had no problems winning simply because I knew before I ever started that I could beat them. And I don't know this now. 
doesn't know it now, but we do know that the battle has been joined with Palmer and Zeller in the moat. Trevino and Nicholas are the ones looking at birdie putts. And we'll find out about hard. whether the hole would be halved or not. Fuzzy Zeller's ball, virtually impossible, buried into the side of the bank of the moat. And, of course, Fuzzy coming off a bad back, well, he can be in pain on a level line, never mind this. No, you'll end up placing it right there where you got your coin. If it remains at rest, it doesn't remain at rest. Yeah, I know that's what you'll end up doing. Now, here's a situation we were talking about. His ball has to land and roll only two club lengths. If it rolls outside of two club lengths, he's going to have to place the ball. He gets to drop it twice. What am I going to do? Look how steep that bank is. <laughs> and it's shaved so that if you're in the sand, if you don't hit your shot cleanly out, it will roll back. I got it right here. Good workout for Glenn Tate. <laughs> I'm not going to get that thing. Forget it, baby. Yeah, I didn't go stand. Well, can't can yeah. you stick it on the... Uh... Can I put it right in here, maybe? There you go. It hit right here, though. Okay, let me move your finger. Ball's in place. It's right near the hole and where it was. Oh, I see. You have to place it where the ball was. Okay, where the ball was hit. Nearest most similar line. Yeah, the okay. hole. Okay. Go, but you don't hear the hole right. where it originally was. I can ground my club in there, won't you? Certainly can. If I... Right. <laughs> what you want, ground it? Oh, you can't. Thanks for doing something. coming soon, I can feel it. You heard him say, I can feel a back injury coming mm. soon. <laughs> you say, how do you play this shot with an orthopedic <laughs> surgeon? <laughs> Mike? Uh, let me borrow you a, a pitching wedge and maybe a ladder if you got one. Be careful. Man. Oh, there'll be no injuries here, folks. I will not do that. <clears throat> People pay money to see us hit shots like this, don't mm -hmm. you? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Moments ago, Arnold Palmer, whose second shot found the moat at 12, now trying to get up and down. Nice shot for Arnold. Lee Trevino has a chance to really apply the pressure. He had hit a sand wedge close enough to look at a birdie effort. I thought it was dead center and I lost it at the last foot. <clears throat> Got it. Oh, you're right. Fuzzy Zeller out of the moat, so this putt is for par. And he misses it. Trevino missed his birdie. That was good, wasn't it? Oh, thank you. And now the door is wide open for Jack putting for $100,000 in his first skin of the day. Jack hit a pitching wedge from 87 yards to get this close to $100,000. He's five feet in. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can't let it get out of the cup. Misses a hundred thousand dollar skin, and this crowd is in shock. Trevino, who had yep. his birdie attempt go by, 
will now have the hole. Yeah, I started, I started it, I went straight. So the 13th hole is another carryover, and it will be worth $135,000. Three, but what a par three, worth $135,000. Let's take a careful look at it. The 13th hole is a 237-yard par three, and another very difficult par three here at PGA West. You see the lake that intimidates the players all on the left in front of the screen, and it forces you to hit to the right. If you do end up to the right, you've got a very tough chip coming back down that hill. Again, here's another hole that could possibly be won with a par. Jack Nicholas having Ooh. to shake himself and forget the five-foot birdie that got away. Lee Trevino thought he had made his birdie until it died off to the right. So $135,000 skin at 13. Let's see whether that's an unlucky number or not. Well, it's happening just like in the, the past years. As the money gets up and we get farther on into the tournament, the putts get tougher and the jokes stop coming. A one iron for Arnold Palmer. No chance. And the water guy. So Arnold, who was in the water twice yesterday, gets wet for the third time here at PGA West. Remember, the course rating 77.1. The toughest rating of any course in the country. On Friday in the Pro-Am, I played right behind Arnold, and I hate to bring this up, but he hit three balls in the water and made a nine. So that's his fourth ball in the water on this hole. This is a, this is a tough hole. It's a one iron. You really have nowhere to hit the ball. There's no bailout here. And imagine if it gets windy. Now, the pin today is in the back left. I know. I said, what we got today? I want to know what we have today. This is the 197 tee? Second tee? The middle is 197 in the front. Wait a minute, man. Nine, nine. You know, double-checking at the tee, no numbers on my that club. Arnold Palmer did not hit a one-iron. He hit a three-iron. And tell obviously not enough. As we saw in the 11th hole, Trevino tries to bring the ball in from left to right, and when the pins are cut to the left out of that, on that water, it makes it a very difficult shot. Lee went with a two-iron. <laughs> That's what the water will do to you. It makes you go right. And a very yeah. tough chip now. On I got a chance if I'm not in the water. Well, give me that one. Then, I mean, I got confused because I don't know what, what the hell the yardage is here. This course just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. A one iron for Fuzzy Zeller. Over the green. Hell no. <sighs> so the green wide open for Jack Nicholas. You know what? I know Jack doesn't feel very good after missing that putt for 100,000, so I, I think he's going to go right at this flag. He has a two iron. I heard the pops earlier. That's why I thought Mike should make the mic through. Right and lost. Way to the right of the green. Towards that big gaping bunker. So as you can I see what happens ball. on this hole. Should I ought to hit another ball? Huh? Arnold Palmer is just saying, I ought to hit another ball. Because he would be three. And you know, he really should. Four might, four might win the That's hole. That's right. But obviously, they are leaving the tee. Yeah. 
before it was that close for $135,000. All right, Steve. Oh, Ronald Palmer hit his tee shot a three iron into the water, so he re-teed, hit another, and with a three iron. Same club, same golfer, completely different result. Jack Nicklaus, meanwhile, hit a two iron to the right side up on the bank short of the green. His second shot. So Jack, who missed a five-foot birdie for $100,000 at 12, has a comparable shot at 13. Lee Trevino hit a two-iron to the right rough. putt as he tries to get par so he is out of the hole remember Palmer is already on in three so the best Arnie can do is bogey oh, so the battle too. is now between Zeller too hard. and Nicholas to have the hole I don't know how to stay down oh well, yeah Palmer inside left picking up since a bogey down, could not help break a little right more than I thought talk yeah. about pressure for $135,000 it boils down to fuzzy and Jack right here He's five feet. He's five foot away. Basically a straight putt. Of course, from five feet for that kind of money, you see a lot of curves in it. Yes, the fuzzy dollar from five feet gets a that putt. All right, Paul, then you're second and make enough. Now it is up soap. to Jack Nicholas yes, to have the hole. Yeah, mate, like, no <laughs> Jack, who has been in on just about every hole right, from the line. beginning, still looking for a skin, I'm not so and sure he will be denied here. Totally different situation than on 12. On 12, he's putting to win the hole. Here, he's putting to defend the money and, and maintain his position. Jack has made putts like this all his career. And we knew a par was going to win a hole sooner or later, and it just happened to be on a par three. Well, that's really a tough par three, isn't it? Oh, it's one of the toughest I've ever played, Bob. I'm telling you. 246 it, yards, a long par three. Even even Jack had a four-footer. Did you think inside that you had a chance? Well, the one thing is, you know, I had a chance because I made mine, and uh, I didn't want him to have a free roll at it. You know, I was just hoping I could get mine in there and put a little pressure on him. Well, good nice going, bud. Thank you, Bob. So we'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is Bill McAtee back now in New York in the Skins game. The 14th, 15th, and 16th holes were carryovers, making the 17th hole worth $140,000. Moments ago, to pick up the action, Fuzzy Zeller made this putt for a birdie. And as Fuzzy celebrates, Arnold Palmer is the only one left who can tie the hole and force a carryover. expect to win no i was just one of those putts bob where you know i figured a two was going to be halved on the whole um, i was fortunate enough to get it in and put a little more pressure on him but it was a great putt too it would look like it might have been a little firm at first well it was going to get there that's all i can tell but you i figured three was not going to get us anything you were a charger you like to go and i love it right in. i love it baby. nice going bud thank you Bobby. well on the 18th hole it is worth thirty five thousand dollars and look at Fuzzy's numbers, $335,000, and he still has a shot at some more money. And a 1987 Toyota. He could also, he could also 
name a favorite charity and Unisys would contribute a personal computer in his name. We'll be back for all of that in a minute. Of all the new cars sold in the U.S., the number one trouble being the same, $35,000 and the brand new 1987 Toyota Camry LE awarded to the winner of this last skin. Pushed it to the right towards that sand trap. Hurry, Mo, hurry. Take a seat. Get up. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He pushed it to the right in the right-hand side. It's not the best spot to be for the toll. He has to negotiate water. He doesn't care if he was put in the water. There is one other thought to keep in mind in this overtime of skins, one departure from the norm. You must tie to go on. Otherwise, it's a shootout and you fall by the wayside. This is a tough, tough driving hole, as we've seen. Not much room to... Not much room to play. Oh, Arnold on the right side trying to hook it, but it's hanging out there. Oh. You're hitting your divot, oh. Arnold. Again. In the rough, but not the worst spot in the world. Get ready to do it. Arnold. Go ahead. That's tough when you can put it in your old divots, isn't it? Good <laughs> shot, Arnold. Great shot, bro. No aiming left, and cutting the bone. He's cutting it too oh, much no. back towards the bunker. But no, no, it's that's, gonna be that's short. a little shorty right there. That's all right. Oh, he didn't even want to get in the trap. I think mean, I can get to the bunker. Yeah. It wasn't a bunker. I got to the bunker. Yeah. That's all right. I'm a hell of a bunker player. <laughs> he better be, huh? <laughs> I didn't want to get finished where we can go have breakfast. It's interesting, we've played, we've seen seven shots hit on this 10th hole and not one of them have been in the fairway. Oh, started down the center and drifting to the right. Okay, oh, wait, not blowing nearly as hard. We can blow it right over this bunker today. So eight shots today and we haven't seen anyone reach the fairway. Let's see why. The tenth hole is a par four, 413 yards long. Not a real long par four, but exacting off the tee. You notice you have to negotiate this water and then stay right of that sand trap that's on the left side along the bank of the water. If you can drive into this area, three woods actually is sufficient club off the tee. You'll have approximately 160 yards left. You have to go over the water, the small green. Today, the pin is placed in the rear of the green, over a little bit of a swale, and then up on a plateau. Tough pin placement. I doubt if we see a birdie here. Buzzy Zeller, second shot out of the bunker at 10. To the right, folks. 185 pushed it to the right with a four. How far to right? Is that in on the edge? Huh? On the edge of the green? $5,000 skin awaits the winner along with a 1987 Toyota Camry LE. But remember, it's a shootout. You have to tie to go on. Otherwise, you fall by the wayside. Hmm. Good shot there. You can see the mounds that are to the right of this fairway, which awaits you if you miss the fairway to the right. I think this is just a very extremely, very tough driving hole. And I know Pete died built it in with a three wood or a two iron off the tee in mind but if you do that you're faced with a long iron second shot so these guys have decided to hit driver and gamble hit it a little bit to the right hopefully grab a good lie and be able to have a six iron to the green this is a four iron for jack nicholas good lie in the right rough against the wind 185 yards playing a little longer with the wind he's, he's lost a little bit to the right too over by fuzzy Just off the right edge in the fringe. Trevino the same distance, 
put it in the sand. It's solid, but he's moving it to the left towards that sand trap that guards the left of the green. Ooh, it didn't carry far enough. Caught the water. Couldn't get it over the hump, Herman. <sighs> well, what it means for right? Lee Trevino, well, we have if we do go on to another hole, he's yeah. out of the match. He is not only out of the hole. So that was a very expensive a strong, bunker uh, shot into the water. Huh? Okay, big shot here for Arnold. Let a couple of skins go away, and I want to, he wants to get this one back. If we could have gone oh, over I did the same. Arnold thing. pulled it way left, way left. Yeah, we could have drove the ball over the bunker today. Thinner air. It looked like Arnold landed on another tee. <laughs> So the 10th hole playing as tough as ever, and we'll be back. Fuzzy Zeller. Get out. Cool harder. So Fuzzy struggling to get par. Remember, Trevino is out of the hole and now out of the match. What? Please. Arnold's second shot down near the ladies' tee of 18. And a very delicate pitch caught up in the rough. So Arnold now is struggling to stay in the match, considering that par should close the door. Now Jack Nicholas from 42 feet. I don't think Jack wants to get shut out. Okay, Steve, I'll take a make. chip at it. Now, all Arnold Palmer can hope to do is knock it in. Because if he gets bogey, yeah. that will probably knock him out of the remainder of the skin. Okay, the best knock him in. Do is a bogey, and of course, when he says to them, "Okay, fellas, knock him in," it would knock, knock him out. Up. Okay. Oh, that's the end of it, isn't it? Palmer now is just realizing <laughs> that's the end of it. Was surprising he picked out. up the ball because I forgot that. That's why I asked. Yeah, I should have put it. There. Jack is two and a half feet. I think someone's going to make their par. And I think probably both of them will. Here we have Jack Nicholas again, yep. putting to hang on. On the 10th hole earlier, he missed a 40 footer by inches. I really should have covered it. Two and a half feet, mm -hmm. and he goes bogey. <laughs> and now Zeller, of all, all people, the, uh, the richest man in town. What do they say? The times. rich get richer. You know that? For $370,000 every used today. <laughs> Just another $35,000 putt, Fuzzy. So he puts the lid on it if he wins. Nicholas will be out with a bogey. Palmer out because he picked up. Trevino out because he was in the water. Today we saw a lot of missed putts. I was surprised. We saw a lot of putts made yesterday. There it is. Fuzzy Zeller wins everything in sight. He won $370,000. He won a 1987 Toyota Camry LE. And a Unisys personal computer will be awarded to Fuzzy's favorite charity.
Let's meet the players at the 10th green and go to Bob Goldby. Don't give him nothing. He's just, uh... Standing here with the players and Bob McCurry, Senior Vice President at Toyota USA. Bob, you have a presentation to make. I sure do. First, I'd like to congratulate all these guys, what great golfers they are, and thank them for their donation to junior golf because that's a great sport, and Toyota does a lot of junior golf, and Fuzzy, this is going to be a habit. Oh, Bob, huh? I hope it does. <laughs> Every year. Well, here's your great car, a new Toyota. And thank you, congratulations, sir. Congratulations, and who could ask for anything more? Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Uh, Personally, I'd like to thank my three uh, partners here for an enjoyable two days. I mean, honestly, win, lose, or draw, it's a pleasure to be on the, just on the same golf course and play the same sports you guys do. You're all wonderful. And many thanks to Toyota and the people here at PGA West and uh, to NBC Sports. Thank you. You got all the money, Fuzzy. Oh, Bob, thank you. That's just, uh, that's what it's all about, though. I didn't play that well, but I skinned well, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Okay, Lee. You got, you got one good skin, didn't you? Yes, I did, and I'm glad I made that deuce uh, because uh, I, I would have probably left here. Herman would have probably looked like Chi-Chi next week. He would have probably <laughs> starved to death before the year was out. But uh, Nicholas tied me on the third hole yesterday, took that Rolex off my wife's watch and that food out of Herman's mouth, and he did it again today on number 13. But I enjoyed it. It was my first one. Uh, I'm a rookie at it. Uh, I did win uh, at least $55,000, and it would have taken me about 20 years to make that uh, 20 years ago. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Arnold, we well, got a big skin yesterday, and uh, you got cut out a couple. Looked like you're going to make a couple today, but they cut you out. Well, that's right. I had a good opportunity a number of times today, Bob, and the putter kind of failed, but I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you're a great champion. Thank, Thank you, you, Arnie. Jack? Shot 70, probably a course record competitively, and you didn't get a skin. Unbelievable. Well, uh, Bob, I didn't make the right putts at the right time. As Lee said, I made a couple of putts to tie him and uh, uh, tied a couple of the other guys for skins, but uh, didn't do anything on my own. And uh, that's the nature of the beast. And, of course, uh, then to finish it off and miss a little short putt here, it's, uh, um, you know, I enjoy playing with these guys. And, of course, congratulations to Fuzzy. I mean, Fuzzy's been getting used to this deal now, but... Uh, uh, I got to get back in the routine and making a few of those putts at the right time. Thank you, Jack. The Skins Game has been brought to you by Toyota, who offers a full line of 1987 cars and trucks. Who could ask for anything more? By Michelob, so exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by USF&G Insurance. USF&G covers the USA. Our thanks to Joni Carter, providing us all those beautiful paintings on the Aurora paint box. Also to all the good folks at Landmark Land Company and here at PGA West, with a particular thanks to Buzz Hollingberry, head of the Marshals, who did such a great job controlling the large crowd. We had over 10,000 on Saturday and close to that again today. And particular thanks, of course, to the four players and a dock of the cap to the big winner, Buzzy Zeller. Now for Bob Gold.